Good evening and welcome again from my study at All Saints Rectory. On this day, the Anglican Communion, and particularly the Church of England, remembers John Donne, a priest and poet. Uh, he was sometime Dean of St Paul's Cathedral. And this is what we have to say about him from uh, a book called uh, Celebrating the Saints. It's a resource that uh, is used by clergy to enrich their worship and it helps to sometimes in a long season of the churches you break up the, the monotony of the, of the office every day. Not that uh, the office should be monotonous but uh, anyway this is what um, I'd like you to know about John Donne. John Donne was born in about the year 1571 and brought up as a Roman Catholic. He was a great nephew of Thomas More although this seems to have had little influence on him because as a youth he was sceptical about all religion. He went up to Oxford when he was 14, studied further at Cambridge and perhaps on the continent, and eventually discovered his Christian faith in the Church of England. After much heart searching, he accepted ordination and later the post of Dean of St Paul's Cathedral. Much of his cynicism dissolved and he became, he became a strong advocate for the discerning of Christian vocation and in particular, affirming his own vocation as a priest, loving and loved by the crucified Christ. The people of London flocked to his sermons. He died on this day in the year 1631. A little bit later, uh, after our psalms and canticle, and before our prayers, I will... Uh, use a little poem, a hymn of his called Hymn to God the Father, which in fact, if you don't mind, I will, I will sing and then we'll reflect on those words uh, and the poem, as you will find out, is a, a pun on his name, quite common from poets of his generation and type known as the metaphysical poets. The form may be becoming familiar to you now. It's the form of Compline that you may have been able to download and print from a church near you website or as I'm doing now I'm going to be using the order for night prayer which can be found on the daily prayer app downloadable from the Church of England website. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord. We made heaven and earth. We reflect on our day past now in the second week of this period of quarantine where we might be finding there's some things uncomfortable about ourselves with which we're having to live and now that we've identified those we can work on those and hold them up to god and pray that these little creases in our satisfaction with ourselves but not in a vain sense can be ironed out to make our lines of communication clearer with god our father in heaven Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Before the ending of the day, creator of the world, we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, tread underfoot our deadly foe that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. Our night psalm for this week is Psalm 139. And if you're using the Daily Prayer app, we pause at the red diamonds at the end of some of the lines. 
O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my down-sitting and my uprising. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me. Your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, even darkness is no darkness with you, the night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I thank you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are your works, my soul knows well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my form as yet unfinished. Already in your book were all my members written as day by day they were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. How deep are your counsels to me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I count them, they are more in the number than the sand. At the end, I am still in your presence. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Zechariah 12.10 I will pour out a spirit of compassion and supplication on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, so that when they look on the one whom they have pierced, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a first ball. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people. A light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. A slight change in my order this evening, an error of mine of omission, not intent. I would have uh, returned to John Dunn uh, after the scripture reading. Uh, I just need to stand up in a minute and get the, the text of the John Dunn poem that I was going to sing for you. This may be familiar to you. Wilt thou forgive that sin where I begun? Wilt 
it was my sin, though it were done before. Wilt thou forgive that sin through which I run? And do run still, though still I do deplore. When thou hast done, thou hast not done, for I have more. Wilt thou forgive that sin which I have won? to sin, and made my sin the door. Wilt thou forgive that sin which I did shun a year or two, but wallowed in a score? When thou hast done, thou hast not done. Done for I have more. I have a sin of fear that when I have spun my last thread, I shall perish on the shore. Swear by thyself that at my death Thy sun shall shine as he shines now, and he to fall. And having done that, thou hast done, I fear no You'll have noticed the puns on his name uh, at uh, various points in this little hymn. Uh, the hymn begins talking about original sin, uh, the doctrine that actually uh, human beings are born in uh, an innately sinful state. Uh, one of the reasons why it was considered and is considered that baptism is necessary. And then the hymn carries forward to those things that actually cause other people to trip up, that we do consciously or subconsciously, deliberately, or by accident. And then the hymn turns to uh, the concerns about uh, his mortality. And it comes to the conclusion that just as Jesus shines in our life, so Jesus will shine here to fall. And actually all of that encompasses the sin in which we were born because there is nothing beyond God's ability to forgive and transform and transfigure. So mindful of the state in which we were born and the state in which we live and the ways in which sometimes we manage to get things rather wrong, we bow our heads for a time of prayer and reflection. Father, we thank you for the mercies you extend to us this day. And we pray that as members of your church, we may be worthy witnesses to your word and to your light. A light that shines in the darkness. A light which beckons us forward from our ways, which drag us down and mar us in frustration and anger. And we continue to pray for the universal church for our brethren across the world. We pray for the local church, the Diocese of Manchester, and for our bishops and the senior leadership team. We pray of your charity for this parish of Newton Heath, that its church, although empty and almost abandoned, may still stand as a sign of hope and expectation and we yearn for the time when we can gather inside those hallowed walls as God's family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We continue to pray for the world that is ruled and governed by human beings. We continue to pray for our Queen and her government. We pray that the news that we receive through the various media at our disposal cause us comfort and reassurance rather than alarm. And we know that the night is darkest just before the dawn. We pray for our city, for the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, and for our Lord Mayor and councillors. We pray for our local councillors in this ward of Newton Heath and Mars Platting, for their good work and for the alleviation of anxiety amongst many who are finding this time of confinement a severe challenge. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for our hospitals and medical centres and all those involved very much at the front line in the fight against this noisome pestilence. We give thanks to God for those who are placing their lives and health at risk. But we pray for a sense of moderation, an absence of panic, and a sense of calm, as we all know that everything is within God's economy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And as the news streams remind us that deaths continue to mount, we pray for those who have died recently and those who will die this night suddenly, maybe unprepared. And we pray for all those who will feel most keenly that loss, sometimes because they're not able to be with loved ones as they slip from this mortal life to eternal light. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all that we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. And visit our homes, O Lord, we pray, and drive far from them the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Come with the dawning of the day, and make yourself known in the breaking of bread. May God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you this night and always. Amen.